So a few things around carbon itself. You, you hear a lot about CO2 uh, these days, and it's an absolutely critical element. And it drives the entire biological system on Earth. And basically, this is the carbon cycle. It's the process of birth, growth, reproduction, death, and decay. Now, on the right-hand side, during the processes of birth, growth, and reproduction, carbon goes into every living thing out of the atmosphere. So it's absorbed through the process of photosynthesis into every living thing. But during the, on the other side, it leaves as we die and decay as every living thing dies and decays, they, that carbon joins up with oxygen again and goes back to the atmosphere. Now that's a cycle that's been going on now for about three and a half billion years. So it's not that CO2 is bad. And in your systems, that's exactly what's happening on a, at least while you've got growing plants on a daily basis. Now to sequester carbon, all we need to do is leave a little bit behind every time it goes through that cycle. And, and it's important that you understand that as people working with biology, that you're working with a carbon cycle. It's not linear what you're working with. Photosynthesis is the driver of that whole system. So the photosynthetic process takes in CO2, uh, water, and in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight, converts that carbon dioxide, removes the carbon molecule and attaches it to, uh, to some other molecules and turns it into sugars. And then the plant can produce a whole lot of other things from those sugars. So if we, if we look at the big picture of carbon dioxide, or carbon in particular, in the atmosphere there's about 800 um, gigatons of carbon in the atmosphere. On all the vegetation in Earth, there's about 610 gigatons of carbon. In the soils, in the top metre of soils, there's an estimated 1,580 gigatons of carbon stored in the top metre of soils. And I reckon if we could go back 8 to 10,000 years when agriculture began and measure the amount of carbon in the top metre of soils, we would have found that there was, I reckon, three thousand gigatons of carbon in the soil. So agriculture has been a major contributor to CO2 going into the atmosphere. There's about a thousand gigatons in the surface of the ocean. There's about uh, four thousand gigatons in known reserves of fossil fuels. And annually we emit about ten gigatons of carbon into the atmosphere through burning fossil fuels. Now, to me, I don't see it as a big ask to be able to take 10 gigatons a year and put it away in a 1,580 gigaton storage. So that basically puts the maths in context of uh, what we can do and the scale uh, of soil carbon. So if you look at this here, you can see there's a dark colour down to about there, and that plant on top there is speargrass. But then there's a different plant there and you'll see the carbon way down under that and then back up here again. That is buffalo grass plant. So that's a buffalo grass plant growing in a, in a spear grass uh, community. And you'll see that it's sequestered a lot more carbon than what the spear grass has done. But the spear grass itself is still sequestering carbon. And that carbon is down um, around about four feet down into the ground. Um, and that's really, when we're talking about sequestering soil carbon, that's really what we're talking about. <clears throat> so how does it get down there? Um, photosynthesis is the driver, and there are two ways in which it gets into the ground. The first one, and the one that most people know about, is decomposition. So when you decompose organic material, you'll get organic carbon. But it's the root system that does that, not the above ground parts. So the above ground parts of the plant photosynthesizes, but it's the volume of roots that we develop that's going to determine how much carbon we end up with in the soil from a decomposition perspective. So you can lay, put a lot of litter on the soil surface, that's not going to add significantly to your soil carbon. What the litter on the surface does, it provides shelter 
and some food for some of the microbiology and maintains your soil moisture so that your microbiology can work below the surface. But probably the most significant way of getting carbon into the soil is through what's called the liquid carbon pathway. And the liquid carbon pathway is that when, when your grasses, for example, are photosynthesizing, they're producing sugars. And about 40% of what a grass plant produces each day in sugar will be sent down into the root system and out into the soil. And it does that to feed the bugs. And then the bugs feed the plant, and the plant feeds the bugs, and the bugs feed the plant, and on and on it goes. And it's that liquid carbon pathway um, and putting that sugar into the soil that is probably the largest, uh, really the biggest component that we're interested in. Uh, and when you see some of David's results shortly, you'll see that a lot of what he's added to the soil has actually come from here, not from the actual plant material itself. And so uh, the bug population is absolutely critical to plant health and plant health is critical to the bug population. So what's it look like on the ground? So this is a uh, cell grazed property on the right hand side, continuously grazed property on the left hand side. When you look into the pastures you can see a significant difference obviously in the volume of grass that's grown. And when you dig the soils up you can see they're a different colour. And the different colour on the right hand side is actually more carbon. And the difference between those two properties has been uh, around two to three tonnes of carbon per hectare per annum um, in sequestration rate on the right hand side. Mm -hmm.